Welcome to the August 21st Aries Working Group call. Uh, we're going to talk, um, continue on um, with the discussion from last week on um, Aries changes in the community as a result of the LFDT and um, uh, some motion within. Um, and then have open discussion. So that's all we had on the agenda right now. Um, reminder, we are recording this and that this is a Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation call. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Um, this is from last week, but since James and Bruce are still there, but I guess I'll remove Sam because he's not here. Sam is hiking in, hiking in the Grand Tetons Mountains right now, and so is not available to join us at this. Um, any, uh, this is a chance for welcome introductions and um, proposed uh, additions to the agenda. So if anyone wants to grab the mic um, with any of those things, please do. From an announcements perspective, Akapai 1.00 is official. Um, the release was completed last fr uh, Friday. Um, we haven't done a lot on announcing that yet. We just were happy to get past the finish line on that. So we'll have more details and more um, information about it. Um, we also added a website for the plugins um, for Akapai, so that is out as well. The Akapai store, if you will. Any other announcements from anyone? All right. Well, let's get to the discussion. Um, for context, um, John sent a note. Uh, uh, a week or so ago, John Jordan from the BC Gov with BC Gov's view on um, how Aries or Akapai in particular wanted to respond, uh, how BC Gov wanted Akapai to respond to the LFDT move and and other um, uh, items in the in the um, community. Um, the proposal was that uh, the BC put forward was that. If the Aries community and the Akapai community agreed that um, Akapai would put an application in to join the Open Wallet Foundation. So there's a presentation and a discussion last week. Um, this is part two of that. And um, in that, I've put together a second presentation or an evolution of that presentation. And so my um, proposal is to go through that. So if that's okay, um, I will go through that. And, um, in that, I basically start on two things. I used this presentation uh, or a version of it uh, yesterday at the ACAPUG meeting. And <clears throat> in that, um, got a bunch of feedback. We we dealt with the specific issue around ACAPI and then got some feedback and um, on other questions and um, the other questions are about Aries and what to do with other things within Aries. Do we leave everything else um, or or what do we change? And so um, this is um, looking at the various questions to be addressed in those primarily. And so that's what most of this um, uh, presentation is about and, and what the the conversation we want to facilitate. <clears throat> on, on the Akapai, um, idea of Akapai applying to move, the um, the community around Akapai um, in the meeting held yesterday um, agreed that we would like Akapai to move to OWF and we would go forward with an application in that way, with a caveat being unless something significant happens, in this um, Aries working group committee uh, working group meeting, if some other ideas come out um, from this discussion, so it's almost done. But but we did want to leave space that if some um, new ideas or different approaches come out, um, 
on how to move forward from this meeting and, and these discussions. Um, there are uh, three other frameworks that would want to um, weigh in on these. And so um, obviously Credo TS already moved long ago. Uh, it was one of the major um, frameworks. Um, Aries VCX, um, James, I don't know if you want to talk about where Aries VCX stands. Yeah. Uh, Aries VCX is, uh, as mentioned here, is also looking at making the similar move to Akapai. Uh, we've discussed with uh, maintainers, and we also discussed it on the VCX call yesterday. Um, there's still some open questions as to whether that is a would that move be one that we want to do uh would that move be a uh joint project if we moved over to the owf and another question on timing and that we are working on some uh a, a vcx framework that will improve the uh, usability factor of ECX. And so we're thinking that the timing uh, may be better to wait a little bit until that's ready. Um, from a, uh, it'll be a lot easier to use this once it's there. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, timing questions, as well as what happens in terms of the, the governance factor and how we want that to land uh as an aries community on the other side so yeah. we would like to move uh just some uh uh some details to be sorted out uh in this call in particular i think also i think that we would like to pose uh, that a little bit further to the aries vcx community in case there's additional feedback that we have uh we would like an opportunity for uh, consumers of the VCX uh, of VCX to uh, provide input. I'm not expecting any uh, uh, counter opinions there, but I want to make sure there's opportunity though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, excellent. Um, scope of the move is the next slide, so that's good. Um, timing is always fun. Um, I think we had more discussions about what's the timing for 1.0 and what should go into it. We should delay and um, <laughs> always question now. I'm, I'm more likely to question whether we want to delay on some artificial or seemingly important line versus um, getting getting it done but that's that's always a, a you know a, a a gray question it's never obvious one way or the other or rarely yeah do you have any ideas or expectations of what the timing if we chose today we're going to move remove v6 we're going to move akapai to owf do you have an idea of how long that is going to that process will take um we have motivation to do it fairly quickly. Um, I don't. I, I think um, I do have in on this slide link. So just so everyone knows, the on the uh, meeting page is a link to this presentation, and people can make changes and adjust as we go. Um, this link here is the um, application process, um, based on my knowledge of the um, Hyperledger process which i've gone through a few times both as a um project creator and as a as a toc member um it it, it does not take long um the the present the the proposal is is created um usually a presentation is made at um uh one of the weekly meetings of the um the committee um that receives the applications and then a decision is made relatively quickly so there's a little bit of um, incubation of the proposal comments made on the the GitHub. It's a it, it it's done as a GitHub PR. So comments made um, back and forth, a presentation, and then um, it generally is is responded to fairly quickly after that. 
Um, yeah, okay. I'll just leave it at that. Um, there are two other frameworks, um, and I don't think any of us here have a lot of connection with these, the SWIFT and the Kotlin frameworks. Um, so those, um, I, I can send out notes to the um, primary maintainer within those, and they can have discussions within that community about what they want to do. Um, I just don't know enough about them, haven't used them. Um, so... Um, Okay. Um, this is the uh, question um, James raised, and um, I think where we um, would like to see it, um, the BC Gov proposal, and again, just BC Gov. I don't want to talk for anyone else, but these are the the two positions. Obviously, one is to move as a group; the other is to move independently um, with both. Akapai and Aries, uh, Aries VCX, and likely at least Aries Ascar moving, um, moving as a pro each as a project into OWF. Um, our proposal is to move independently, and that's based on our experience with Aries of all of the frameworks being more or less independent of one another. another. Um, different maintainers, different roadmaps, all going in the same general direction, but each with their own emphasis on what they want to um, accomplish in the short and and long in the short term. Anyway, long term, it's all about you know achieving interoperability, but in the short term, it's always we have these priorities and we're doing these things, and those don't necessarily line up uh, across the frameworks. We've also struggled to get um, frameworks that are very similar to Aries. Um, if you read the the charters of Identis and Veramo, they're identical to what you would put into a charter for an Aries framework, but they chose to remain independent. So, um, you know, d didn't want to join for whatever reason the Aries group. So we think um, why fight that trend? and to go forward as independent, but, and this is huge, is organized within OWF, a Aries working group type call, and um, and e even a work stream on, ena on, on enabling interoperability across all of the comparable OWF projects. And, um, as I as I put this together, I came up with this idea of um, also thinking about what to do with AIPs, um, Aries interop pro profiles, um, having it be a, a wallet interoperability group and wallet interoperability profiles. I think the the concept of profiles and a place to meet, discuss, and um, compare alignment is really important, and so that's. That's what we think would be a good idea. So with that, open the floor to other comments and thoughts of others on, on how to move, how to apply to move. James, did the Aries VCX have opinions on that? Um, I think that we were uh, both both are good in that we if we move independently that means that we have flexibility from the vcx perspective and timing um but mm -hmm. independently also means there's a little bit more overhead in terms of governance because we each individually have our own governance yeah that, that uh adds a little bit of overhead but also could potentially be a good thing in terms of um it's more specific to each individual project so yeah. uh, it's a balance there um so we did not reach a like a, a clear this is what we would like to push for i yeah. think that i lean independently my only worry is we there's the possibility we lose some of the cohesiveness uh like the single um yeah 
the single goal slash target, if you will. Even if mm -hmm. there's some wiggle room underneath that for the individual projects, the overall Aries umbrella offers a cohesive uh, overall goal, if you will. Um, so that would be my worry about moving independently. Yeah. The, the thing about where we are now is maybe if we'd done it with Credo, um, it might have worked better. Um, but if it's now just the two and we still have outside of it, Identis, Veramo, Credo, and so on, um, it, it becomes even harder. So, right. Yeah. Yep. Bringing, you know, bringing the band back together. I, I think that's why uh, our thought is to push on this um, interoperability piece, um, you know, and push on that and try to get the others to all join into that. I, I would agree with that. I would support that given that yeah. I think you're right in that <laughs> trying to get uh credo uh, and identity and Rama into a single thing, uh, a single project like that. I don't, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty tough. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Um, so the leaning there um, is independent. Um, does anyone object to that? Does anyone think ind independent is a really bad idea? Okay. Um, the two biggest repos that are the most interesting will hit next. Um, so we'll start with Aries RFCs. Um, the thought here, and I think we, we expressed it last week, but the thought here is Aries RFCs, many of them are related to DITCOM. Obviously, um, Aries in the beginning was very um, DITCOM oriented, and it's only been later that in, projects have sort of independently added non-DITCOM features um, to the code base. So, uh, and the Aries RFCs still reflect the did com nature. So um, the idea uh, was to retain the published site, um, perhaps moving the more or less frozen repo to diff to keep it um, in, a, in a place that is active. So um, hopefully get a vanity URL on this so that we have uh, it other than just um, the, the, um, the default GitHub pages name. Um, and and keep it maintained. The AIP two protocols within those lists are the most or RFPs or RFCs. I mean, are the most important. Um, the concepts are probably already all in the DIDCOM messaging specification that is at diff, and so um, we probably more or less drop those. We don't need to maintain them. Um, Again, a pass through should be done, so a, a little bit of work is needed to make sure of that of of that claim. But I think the vast majority of those will be in the DIDCOM messaging spec anyway, and so really don't need to. the The AIP two features RFCs are DIDCOM protocols. Some of them are already in um, AIP or sorry in the DIDCOM um, area, but um, any that aren't would be considered to be moved or should be moved to diff as didcom protocols and where since diff is the home of didcom those should go to where the home of didcom is cool i would like to mention uh, since we're talking about some of the or a lot of them being or some of them already being in the uh didcom play or place yeah, yeah. If you go to didcom.org there are actually quite a few protocols that instead of listing out what the protocol is, it just links to the Aries RFC. Yeah. And and basically what I'd like to see is we actually move the RFC in place of the link. Yep. Um, I was just making that comment. Yeah. Excellent. Didcom.org, right? Yep. That's the one. All right. Um, 
and then adopted, accepted, demonstrated, and proposed. So one of the things we did recently was we moved a whole pile um, of, of, of RFCs to stalled, and they would stay as frozen. These ones, there's a smaller list. A bunch of these adopted and accepted are already in AIP2. So those would already have been covered in this in this discussion here. There are some that would be should be looked at to see whether we would want to move them to diff um, and and actually put them in or simply move them to stalled as well and, and leave them be. So uh, I think again, like a one meeting to go through a list and get consensus on where to put each of these, um, we'd be we'd have resolved where Aries RFC should go. Um, the only thing is, uh, I do see examples like the OCA for Aries RFC, um, where it's really separated from Didcom. We might want to find another home for that. Um, perhaps even in this case of this one. Um, make it OCA for verifiable credentials and move it over to um, perhaps in the OCA world or or um, or or somewhere else. Uh, but that's what I propose for Aries RFCs. Any comments, further comments, suggestions, or do people see this as a as a reasonable approach? Only question on the AIP two point concepts is the your thought process to being relying on the Didcom v2 specification or no. is that going okay so <laughs> so that'll come up in the discussion next i'm i'm strictly talking here about the aries rfc repository and what to do with the content in it okay okay now Next thing is AIPs in general. So AIP 2.0 needs to exist somewhere. Um, I would like to move it as a concept over to DIFF as um, a, an existing de facto standard, if you will, um, and to be retained there as part of the DIFF. Uh, as the DIDCOM working group, but doesn't need really any maintenance. We do some clarifications every once in a while, but AIP2 is set. Um, it could go to OWF as an exemplar wallet interop profile or the first of them. Um, I think it was Patrick uh, St. Louis who pointed out that there will be in the wallet interop profile more than just one at a time. It won't just be a sequence of AIP2, AIP3, and so on. But rather, there will be multiple interrupt profiles that, that use different stacks and things like that. And maybe AIP2 could be the first of those. So um, I, something to consider as to where it goes. Um, but as a concept, AIP2.0 needs to have a place that we can point to. And so didcom.org slash AIP2 might be a good place. Um, uh, you know, that for sure, I, I'm pretty strong on the need to retain that uh, both as a uh, as a as an actual spec, if you will. James? I think I agree that it's a must to keep it. Where it goes is the big question. Yeah. I, I slightly lean towards the WF because... Okay. Um, for where are the profiles live? For instance, mm. if we want to have a profile that is covering, uh, well, this maybe a bad example, open ID for VC, um, it would it make sense for it to be under the diff in that case? Where I feel like the OWF is broad enough in scope that it may make sense to be able to have any profile there that's referencing yeah, but... other organizations. You know? Yeah. I see something's there. Um, to Akif's question, I think what we would do is AIP2 would continue to be aligned, but there would be other protocols that themselves would have a line of them. So they might be named differently, um, but they would, each one on their own would have a sequence. Does that make sense, Akif? Yeah, I see what you mean there. 
Yeah, so there might maybe be an, two an point open like ID one. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Um, Brian, if I could ask you, is there uh, the concept of an unreal, you know, independent of working groups, or sorry, independent of projects at OWF, but the idea of a working group? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So I think um, coming back to this, I think as part of the application to move to OWF, we would also apply to start an, uh, you know, some sort of, if there isn't one already, and of course, if there is great, but if there isn't a wallet interoperability group, and as part of that, we would um, propose as part of its work would be um, the building of profiles and and that and thus the move of AIP 2.0 to the wallet interop profile group, whatever it be called. That would certainly make sense as an OWF uh, working group. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, and that gives us, to me, that would give us that replacement for this call for this working group. Um, so I really like that. There are definitely a lots of other protocols. I know the um, um, Netherlands Blockchain um, Alliance or something like that, I can't remember. Hey, they have something, um, the Swiss announced theirs, the EU obviously is working on theirs. So. Um, there's a lot of places we can get that done. Uh, oh, there's a lot of content meat to discuss at those things at that that group. Okay, so that's Aries RFCs. I like kind of where we've landed on that. Um, again, um, sounds like the idea is th this idea sort of is okay. Um, we again would have to apply to diff to um, make these proposals. And then we have sort of a meeting to decide which specific ones go ahead and move from there, evolve um, the links that make up AIP2, um, the thing that makes it concrete to point to wherever the various um, protocols land. Um, Aries Agent Test Harness. Um, this is the other one that is is the most interesting move. It clearly needs to move somewhere. So there's sort of two, uh, three ideas that came out. Um, two we started with, and one added yesterday. Um, one is move to diff, and it and the Aries agent test harness becomes the didcom test harness because um, it is it is largely focused around didcom, establishing didcom connections, and executing protocols, uh, didcom protocols on top of those connections. Uh, it does it does kind of make sense to that. Um, move it to the OWF and expand the mandate to go beyond Didcom and AIP, you know, testing and and go into things like um, open ID testing. the The framework is the um, the engine, the test engine has proven effective. The approach of um, bring your own uh, implementation along. And as long as you connect to the test harness in the right way, you can you can coordinate and execute tests against other harness against other implementations. That's proven quite powerful. We could go there. And the other idea that came up yesterday is we actually do both of these things. We copy the existing test harness um, and prune it to the to each community. We put one in diff and prune it down to just the didcom ones as a starting point place to expand on didcom um, functionality, moving obviously as soon as possible into didcom v2 and things like that. And the second is move it to OWF, prune it to what makes sense at OWF and then continue to grow it in the um, that version in, in OWF. So th those, that is also a reasonable option. With that, I'll open the floor because I really don't have, I don't have strong opinions on what's the best way. I just know we want to keep it. James. I think that we, from my opinion, my perspective is that we should either move it to the OWF or do both and not 
not do just move to the diff because yeah, I think that okay. we want to have testing and interoperability uh, statuses uh, yeah. for various uh, uh, profiles, if you will. Yeah. So I lean towards moving to the OWF to just have it rather than having two repositories that are very similar with a lot of infrastructure uh, required. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that increases yeah. the maintenance cost. Um, so I lean I can... towards just OWF, but I'm also not. Uh, <laughs> if if the maintainers who work on the test harness the most want to split it, I think that's yeah. that's those are the people who have the mo should have the most input into whether it's split or if it's all just moved to OWF. Yeah, I think you just perfectly said the rationale for why to move it to OWF and not even consider the other two. Well, so kind of a hybrid of the both. Uh, one of the things that came up in yesterday's meeting that I thought was really good, a good idea was where you move the uh, core didcom stuff to the diff. And then you say, for example, you fork it in an OWF and then you add the OD OWF tests on top of that. Yeah, okay. Uh, or you have like, basically you're adding profile of tests or plugins of tests, right? Mm -hmm. For the OWF on top of what's already there. Yeah. I think the idea though, I, I think I think we can achieve both by moving the test and then referencing it in diff. But I think the idea of since OWF is the broader um ex we lead to expanding the mandate, but the idea of maintaining two copies, which is, I think, what James was saying, is is the costly one. I think by moving it to OWF, but having enabling the DIDCOM components of it to be um, included and 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 regularly tested is is a good idea. Because I can also see your your point here, Colton, of wanting to have like the diff <laughs> may uh, <laughs> their realm being didcom, so having the uh, authorities the kind of wrong word here, but the um, yeah. oversight of that testing that does make sense. So if we can have some method to reference that from OWF or plug into the OWF, so it's a uh, uh, orchestrator, right. if you will, that that could make sense as well. That's more work to maybe implement and get working, but could be worthwhile to do. Right, and that, that's why I was um, suggesting, like whether forking or using uh, some form of plugin architecture. The uh, like, you're right. You're absolutely right. Having two different copies of the test framework is going to be an absolute nightmare. But yeah. if they were to share the same base code, yeah. but like the individual portions, like the DIDCOM tests are managed by DIDCOM group, yeah. uh, and then the OWF related tests are managed by the OWF group, that is more of the ideal scenario. Yeah. And I think that can be done. I think the architecture of of the, the test harness lit, works with that. I mean, the engine is basically a, a, a behave engine which is, you know, generic, has nothing to do with DITCOM or wallets or anything else. It's just a, a an engine. And so um, it then breaks down into features and those features, features and steps, the features being what you're testing, which can be DITCOM things or or non-DITCOM things. And then the steps are how those those features are, man are, are is the code to manage those. So I think it, it lends itself well to that model that you're talking about, but, but having just one copy of it would be much less work for everyone. And I think that's the best approach to do it. Okay. This is one where we want to figure out how to make sure that we've got both, both covered. Next up, there are 15 other repositories. Um, I think Aries Asgar which is um, the 
storage, secure storage for any wallet. It's the secure storage used by Credo. It's the uh, secure storage used by Akpai, by BCX. It um, belongs as its own project. So um, the only thing I worry about there is just the lack of documentation, but it is um, a, a viable um, project and, and enables, you know, storage for um, obviously mobile wallets for Postgres wallets on enterprises and so on. So it it belongs as a separate one. Didn't quite know what to do with BBS signatures, whether we need to do anything with it. And, and, and maybe it belongs down in the archive. I'm not sure. BBS is such up in the air. Um, it could be at a, a, a sub of Aries Ascar since it is about signatures and, and a lot of what Aries Ascar does is is um, it's a key management service. Aries Ascar is not just storage, but also you know pass something in, get it signed, get get the result out. So maybe it is a, a sub of Aries Ascar. It shouldn't be its own project. I, I pretty much convinced myself that this would be a bad idea. Um, there's several obvious Akapai ones, um, so that's easy. Those are just extra repositories around Akapai. Um, there's some that can be just archived, um, the Ares repo itself, the static agent and the Ares BBS. And then um, up to the maintainers, I quite frankly don't even know what these do and I'm not sure they're being maintained. So these would likely get in, go into the archive category, but I just don't know. We just have to contact who's, who's doing things with those. That leaves these ones. Um, these have tended to be Akapai oriented and so could go as sub to Akapai, but they're really designed to be generic so that you know you can implement a mediator with Akapai as, as the Aries component today. Um, but you could also implement it with uh, Credo as, as the piece. So they were designed to do, to do it that way. Aries endorser service is much more tied to Indy and maybe this just becomes the indie endorser service and, and transfers over there. Um, and then Akrita is um, a, a brilliant test engine, um, load testing capability that has been used primarily with Akapai to now for testing enterprise services, but in theory could be used with other um, interoperable um, components to Akapai. So um, quite reasonable to have it move um, either as a sub to Akapai or um, independent. Comments, thoughts on any of those? Um, I think the Aries Accreta project should move to OWF. Um, and uh, it's okay to be a sub for now, but maybe promote it later if we need to. I like that idea. And and maybe that's that that is the answer. I hadn't thought of it and, and particularly put it that way, but thought of it in those. But maybe that for all three of these, um, we do that. I would love to see, for example, um, oh wait, socket doc is not here. <laughs> um, socket doc should be somewhere, <laughs> and it definitely. I'd love to see it as part of the Aries mediator. Um, service and and built into that but aries socket doc is is another one james i would one of the things i might propose is to put the aries mediator service uh as part of the akapai move um, okay or underneath that the rationale being is that vcx has a mediator that it has yeah deployed and what i don't i have not used it and it was primarily used by absa so it's a little bit there yeah. and there's some interest to actually do some work there but my thought process being is you could compare it similar to okay akabai has the mediator there is mediator service which is a lot more um or is more robust uh because it's been used a lot more yeah. um uh, so in parallel okay so vcx it's built into our same repository and deployed there as well the the images that are needed so yeah that's one argument um but 
it's also been a minute since I poked at the mediator service. How realistic do you think it is for it to be non uh, anybody, I guess, uh, uh, non-specific to Akapai? It's totally available to be non-specific to Akapai. It it is a didcom mediator service, um, as opposed to Akapai. And and as I say, I believe there's even code in the repo that is that that somebody put that I think was put in there that said, here's how you use it with, um, with Credo as the underlying engine. Mm. Um, the other thing I like about the Aries VCX one is being, you know, Aries mediator is a thing you want lightning fast. You want it to be, you know, you want it to be rust. <laughs> it has limited functionality. Yep. Akapai has way too much functionality for what Aries mediator service should be. So, Having socket doc, having Rust code in there would be a a really good way. Um, so maybe the the biggest answer might be this one move um, is is to be a didcom mediator. Since I think mediator is associated with didcom, is it not? I think yeah, yeah, because yeah, um, OIDC just makes it impossible to to connect from the enterprise side to the other. Everything has to be initiated by the by the client, if you will, by the wallet, if you will. Um, what Aries Mediator Service allows is for the wallet to receive requests that are initiated by somebody else. So maybe it is best to go to Didcom. Um, I would love to see the work done and and uh, with getting Aries Socket Doc integrated in there. So maybe that's the right answer. I, I do. You have convinced me, though, Stephen, that I think having it be a separate thing versus sub yeah. underneath Akapai may make more sense. Okay. Um, and then this one, um, I think this is to tightly tied right now. But we we are actually um, just you know BC Gov as we think about moving to did TDW. Um, we're actually designing a similar endorser service using TDW as as exists because that that endorser capability that Indy has is is very important for an enterprise where you want to have within the enterprise a single place that oversees the different um, sub organizations that are you know signing things that are are creating dids that are uh, that are issuing credentials you want some sort of centralized control of, on that within the enterprise and and the endorser service is a great way to do that so okay would you want uh, it to be a like a have a interface for endorser services then you have a specific one that is the indie endorser service and then you have one for yeah that's that's much more likely yeah okay yeah and again um you know Underneath this is Akapai, but it's it's using like, you know, 5% of the Akapai functionality. It's just Akapai had the functionality, so it was easy to use. Um, but it's definitely not, um, doesn't need all that power. Yeah. Just easy to do with that. Okay. Good discussion. I think we actually got a reasonable process on e on all of those. Um, I thought I'd bring this up, the related projects, Indy and non-creds. Uh, Indy clearly stays at Hyperledger LFDT. Um, since it's a distributed ledger, I don't think anyone has any concerns with that. Um, a non-creds V1 definitely needs a home. A non-creds V1 is fully stable, well used. We don't want to say it, you know, it's somehow stopped working or anything. So it needs a home. Perhaps stay with LFDT, perhaps move to diff, apply cryptography, um, perhaps to OWF. I don't know. Um, but it definitely is a stable, well used um capability. Um uh, non-creds v2 uh is is got the makings for for being um the uh ZKP effort in the future for um VCs, but 
Um, it is one of about eight different projects that are independently moving forward with VC ZKP efforts. And we're, we're really working towards trying to bring those efforts together. And so um, there's going to be compromise in how to do that. We don't want to go out and say, hey, it has to be an on creds, nothing else, and we won't play otherwise. That's what we need to we need to get past. So um, that's how we think this ought to go. I don't know if anyone has any other comments on any ideas on an on creds V1 and V2. Yeah, I had a quick question. Um, you mentioned, or there's a note there that says Agora is currently at Hyperledger. Yeah. Is that the plan that it would stay there? Or um, so Agora is primitive cryptographic libraries that are in the labs. Um, the the huge value in those is that they are not only implemented and and solid. Um, libraries, but also um, most of them have been audited, or in the, or and more are being added that are audited. Um, so those are are very valuable. Um, Hyperledger Labs or LFDT Labs will continue, and so without any other guidance, those will just migrate over as part of the Hyperledger LFDT um, consolidation or or you know umbrella organization, but. Um, they they will you know obviously remain open source and remain available um but you know up to really mike lauder is is driving a lot of that and so um sort of uh anyone's welcome to work with mike to figure out how best to proceed with those does that answer the question it was Little yeah, I, it was just your use of the word currently. I was wondering if there was plans to for Agora to move from Hyperledger, and if so, no, where? I, but... I did check with Sean to ask about the future of Hyperledger Labs, and he basically said, absolutely, it will continue. Yeah. Um, and and so there there's always a home. So it 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 can stay where it is and 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 just sort of move as as Hyperledger Labs move. So the name might change. Uh, I don't think it even will change. I think it'll stay the same. So on on the question, um, are, are non-creds V1 and V2 diverging at all? I mean, are they taking independent paths or is it a normal succession? Um, <laughs> if we could get a concerted effort on an on creds v2 it definitely is a path forward between v1 and v2 the challenge has been to get that consolidated effort because of those that are interested in actually implementing zkp things are all doing it in different places and and so we're not getting a consolidated effort on moving v2 um on evolving the basis that we have. So V2 code exists and is not a direct successor, but it could be. There's a clear path of how you get from V1 to V2 if you wanted to, but th there's not been interest in doing the work to do that at this point. Got it. V2 is really a proof of concept. Here's how you do it. Here's what's needed. Here's all the data elements, but it hasn't been specifically aligned with V1. And um, and, and that would need to be done. That's on the to-do list, but, but we just don't have um, the maintainer showing up to do it. All right. So um, I think we're pretty close to time. These are the decisions. I think we're more or less other frameworks um, likely to move. Need to contact other maintainers. Aries, ECX likely to move. Um, independent. Independent, I think, is the um, uh, 
independent with an interop group. The test harness, I think we came up with a good answer to Aries RFC. I think we came a good answer to most of the other repos. I think we've got good answers. Um, so I think the immediate question way back at the beginning of um, Akapai, I think we're pretty much there that we're going to apply to move Akapai. And, and to do that relatively soon, I think we'll wait a, a day or two for things to come out, but it might start as early as next Monday, the process, which would be starting to put together the, um, uh, the proposal. Um, walking through this um, life cycle and the pro, uh, project proposal um, requirements. So that could start um, pretty soon. And then um, I think we have pretty good answers that we could, um, oops, uh, enunciate um, in a, in a follow-up meeting for what to do with the other ones. Aries VCX, James, um, you and the other maintainers will sort of drive that and figure out. Um, and then, um sort of describe what was discussed here in concrete terms and perhaps have one more um decision like conversation next week i think that's smart to put it in concrete terms in particular for uh individuals who cannot make it to the call at this time making sure yeah. that they have a chance to voice yeah. any ideas or opinions yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good discussion. Any other final comments from anyone? So since um, everything's moving around, I, I didn't hear um, about TDW. Is that, is BC ah. Gov maintaining that or is that going somewhere? Uh, this is certainly a different conversation. Yeah, TDW, just so you know, is is um, there's a there's the effort, and you've probably seen it on LinkedIn, um, a diff W3C um, combined effort, CCG at, at W3C combined effort to, to move did standardization. We'll be starting a group. Um, I'm hoping it will be a combined did web, did TDW working group to finalize the spec move the spec from BC Gov likely to W3C, I think. Um, so it would be a work item there combining, as I say, the did web spec and the did TDW spec with with even the possibility if if uh, maintainers agree to actually merge the two specs. So that's even a possibility. So it might be two specs, it might be one spec. Did TDW is totally independent of this. Obviously we are working on um, adding um, did TDW to Akapai and making it uh, a possibility, uh, making it uh, a capability, I mean. Uh, the spec is really pretty tight right now. We're doing the witness implementation and and just um, pro provide, we'll provide feedback based on that implementation into the spec. And I think that will be the last significant um, sort of one, pre 1.0 one um, concept going in. Everything else is tightening up pretty nicely. Brian. Yeah, I just in your call for last minute comments, I, as CTO at the Open Wallet Foundation, I just wanted to um, both express my appreciation for for John and for yourself, Stephen, for leading this conversation about about um, the the refactoring and the move of the projects. Um, but I wanted to reassure everybody, you know, we're super impressed at the at what the Aries community as a whole has been able to accomplish uh, and the cohesiveness of this effort. Um, uh, and we are committed to making sure that the great support that you've had at Hyperledger as a community would continue at the Open Wallet Foundation. In fact, <laughs> you'd still be uh, relying upon Sean for a lot of the day-to-day -day and, and Rye and, and a bunch of very familiar faces. Um, uh, uh, but we also hope that this move helps um, connect uh, this effort 
with a, a lot of the other wallet standards and wallet implementation work going on out there to help build um, uh, down the road wallets that can really be these multi-protocol, multi-credential format, um, multi-presentation, uh, you know, UI kinds of kinds of vehicles that sit, you know, next to your web browser and next to your mail client as essential tools of productivity and general purpose utility. So um, uh, I really uh, am very optimistic that this move uh, moves all of us much further along in, in getting to that 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 kind of future. And so uh, it's it's both my personal goal, but also really the Open Wallet Foundation's community's goal to see the projects that move over to OWF be, be a success, be well integrated, and uh, feel very well supported. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Brian. That's awesome. Yeah, I was brought up yesterday. What a fantastic job um, the Hyperledger staff has been, and the um, and the governance that has made it so easy to do so many things. So that the people that show up here, which are the people that want to code and and deliver don't uh, can also accomplish the other parts of, of of things that they're not so familiar with the things like the governments and administration. So really appreciate that and really glad to have uh, to be confident that it, at OWF we get all uh, uh, the same the same learnings are still um, used. All right, with that, I think we have completed uh, what we needed to do today. So. We'll call the meeting. Thanks all. Thank you.